Welcome, Moon and Star. I know you want to know more about the lore and stuff. As a literature expert, I will help you pick the best books to read. All right, my friend Crassius, who is a specialist in history and literature, he recommended this book to me. It's called The Lusty Argonian Maid, Volume 1. I trust my friend, so let's analyze this book. I'm pretty sure it has a deep meaning. Lifts her tail. That's the Argonian. She says, Certainly not, kind sir. I am here but to clean your chambers. Well, obviously if an Argonian would have talked to me like that, I would have decapitated it right away. But let's see what happens next. Is that all you have come here for, little one? My chambers? The master says, I have no idea what it is you imply, master. I am but a poor Argonian maid. Well, that's a trick. There is no poor Argonians. Just obedient farm tools. Then Crantius Colto says about the Argonian maid that she has, quote-unquote, such strong legs and shapely tail. That is a brilliant metaphor that says, Hey, Argonians, a slave life is healthy. Working in Dren Plantation will give you a thick booty and good cardio. A little bit after the Argonian maid says, I must finish my cleaning, sir. The mistress will have my head if I do not. It might surprise you, but this line is very subtle. We actually behead Argonians, and it's fun. So it's a very interesting projection to read this in an Argonian perspective. Then Crantius Colto says, Cleaning, eh? I have something for you. Here, polish my spear. The spear is an allegory of Vivex domination, Vivex spear being the symbol of the power owned by the elites, a very subtle illustration of the class warfare that is a key subject in modern Vardafel history. Amazing literature. But now let's analyze this masterpiece, The Real Berenzia, Volume 2. It's about Berenzia, the future queen of Morrowind. She goes to Riften in Skyrim for some reason. And she makes a Khajiit friend, which is odd. But anyway, let's read it. I'm sure it will be very delicate writing anyway. All right. He put an arm around her, leaned over and kissed her, thrusting his tongue deep into her mouth and his free hand into her shirt. Well, that's poetic. Let's see what happens next. Let's go upstairs. We can use my room. Berenziah felt both embarrassed and excited by his boldness. Theris grinned insolently. Why bother? You want me, don't you? I'll bet you'd pay me, wouldn't you? No, Berenzia said. She did want him, but not that badly. I don't get it. Why would a Dunmer desire a Khajiit? She doesn't own slaves already? All right, that's a bit weird. I guess it's kind of philosophical. Let's keep reading. He opened her shirt and pulled it down on her shoulders so that her... What? Her Kwama eggs were exposed. Nice pair, kid. She was facing the wall, but she could feel the stares of the other patrons. A hush had fallen over the place. Even the bard had stilled. She felt both nausea and a hot, burning desire. Her hands released his turgid... Oh, jeez, his... Wraith guard was inside her, and she was screaming in both pain and ecstasy. Bro, I'm not sure if I can analyze that, but that's some heavy lore stuff. Okay, let's read a bit more. That is fine literature, so... Okay, she says that hurts. And then he puts his gigantic... Massive Diedrich into her. Wabajack. And then she falls asleep. Okay, that's really deep lore. Guys, you really need to read that. All right, I'm not willing to continue this, but hey, if you want more lore, just read the real Berenziah. I hope I helped you pick a good book to read for bedtime, or something that will open your heart to this magic world that is Elder Scrolls literature and lore. Okay. Where is my toilet paper?